Do you you ever been to a Leonard Skinner concert, Andre? No, I actually have not. Okay. Uh, what you're supposed? Yeah, you I have, and you're supposed to be uh, loaded as hell and have a lighter oh. when they play Freebird. <laughs> Hi, this is Kevin Deal. Today we're going to talk about shrinking things down that are state-of-the-art and unbelievable engineering. This is the Cabas Rialto. This is a speaker that won uh, a couple of awards at recent shows. Best value system. I mean, that's the funny thing about this. This was the best value system. It's two little boxes, yet it's considered a system, and it is a system. Uh, you know, Cabasa is an amazing company. They've been in business for over 70 years. In 1952, uh, they created their first uh, coaxial, uh, like dual concentric designs, because they're all about that, just like I am. Uh, in 1958, they created uh, their first uh, tri-amplified system. And then fast forward to today, and they created something that is state of the art. I'm going to show you a picture of it. It's called La Sphere, and it's $222,000 and some change. And I mean, it really is a tour de force in the way of high end audio in an amazing, gorgeous, sculpted package that has eight external amplifiers and an external crossover and that it has uh, built-in uh, streaming and has the ability to connect to the internet up to the Kabas cloud and adjust the bass response to the room. And, and what they have done is they have taken the technology of the La Sphere, and they have continued to bring it down and bring it down into smaller and smaller packages. So you look at the Pellegrino, which is unbelievable and so gorgeous that's right around under thirty thousand dollars and then you've got the uh, koya and the uh, uh 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 the uh well anyway you've got the uh, the pearl and the pearl akoya and now you have rialto now rialto is a little bit different than the other uh products in that these are sold as a system this is sold as a pair but you know and i gotta tell you something every dealer in the country needs to be offering these so if you are a hi-fi dealer and you're curious reach out to us and we'll get you in touch with somebody that will help you with that and if your local dealer doesn't have it tell them to ask for it i believe in supporting small business every town is better off with a hi-fi store and a record store that's my take on it so what is this all about? They've taken the engineering and the parts and they brought it down into a package. I've got a pair of these in my big sound room at home. My big sound room that has a pair of uh, Grand Utopias in it, right? That I'm gonna be getting six packs of real subs in there, right? And it is, you know, it's a fun room. But I, the sound that I got out of these this morning, my wife came in and she was dancing for me Miss Laura, she was dancing to the girl from Ipanema, and boy, that was uh, quite a sight, and I sure did love it. But how do they do it? Well, it starts with this. Start with the, the drivers. How do you get bass out of an itty-bitty little box like this? Well, you have to create a new type of patented driver, and they did that. It's called Held Technology. High excursion, low distortion. I'm going to show you one of those drivers right here. Ugh. This is the same driver as this one. We're going to show you the back of it, except a little bit larger. This is from a speaker called the Pearl. And you can see this. I mean, and it, it's a carbon fiber cone, and it is designed to have a very, very long excursion and be able to maintain the proper uh, magnetic field no, no matter where the voice coil is in its stroke relative to the magnet. I mean, it is something, and it is a patented design they did this in-house that's what i'm talking about so that's how you get the bottom end out of this but what did they want to do you know when you have a smaller driver like this and because this is a 6.7 inch base driver sometimes you want to overcome the limits of physics right so what can you do to make that happen well, this has a built-in software that will run test tones. There's push a button on the app and it'll, sh it'll start playing uh, test tones, first for this speaker, then to this speaker. There is a microphone built into the back of the box 
and it's going to read and determine how this woofer is uh, performing in your room. It's going to take that signal, it's going to feed it up to the Kibosh servers in the cloud, and then it's going to come back and it's going to tell this speaker how to work in your room to give you the best and the flattest speaker response for the positioning that you have. Now, if you end up moving the speaker and fine tuning it, which you ought to do that, you might want to redo that, uh, that uh, software reading of the driver to make sure that you're always getting the best sound you have. This is a 450 watt amplifier just for this bass driver. Now, up in the front, you have another patented design. This, and this is, this is again, if you go look at the La Sphere, the La Sphere is a triaxial version. Uh, I think it's triaxial. Yes, it is triaxial version of this driver. Uh, obviously, much, much larger and obviously more ornate, but still the same basic design. You've got a tweeter right in the center, and this is a phase correction plug, and then here you have a carbon fiber mid-range driver. And how this is going to compare to other speakers that I've heard, because there there's other companies making these box things with internet built in, right? There's Everybody's doing that, and everyone's going to continue to do it. But they're not going to be like this, because this speaker has the mid-band purity that maybe not everyone's going to get, maybe not everyone's going to demand it, but I think that demanding audiophiles will, and the mid-band on this, I'm telling you, Girl from Ipanema, the, the mid-band was just sweet and amazing and cohesive and easy to understand, and it didn't sound distorted, and, and that is from a proper design and a built-in amplifier that supplies 300 watts to the mid-range and 300 watts to the tweeter. Now, what else did they do that makes this speaker entirely different than anybody else? There's another function, and I'm going to go pop it into this one right here. I'm going to go into my settings, and I'm going to go into audio customization and then I'm going to pick out the Rialto's and I'm going to be able to adjust this speaker or the sound of this speaker relative to its position to the rear wall. So right now I can have distant, intermediate, or near. Boom. And then you have advanced customization and here you have something that is called audio spectrum. I love this. That allows you Look, some people have rooms that are really reflective. That is, that's the way that it is in the downstairs of my house. I mean, because it's a hardwood floors and a lot of glass windows, and that causes a lot of problems. Other people, they might have a room that's got a lot of drapes and maybe, uh, you know, shag carpeting. So you're able to make five different settings here, depending on the kind of room that you have, and it'll fine tune these speakers to your room. You've got high tone, which means that you're in a room that's very absorptive. You've got neutral, which means that there's no DSP being done at all. And then you have low tone, which is going to help to uh, attenuate the, the bottom end, very low tone, which gives you more of the same, and then extreme low tone, which means that maybe you don't have any boundaries. Maybe you're going to be using these outside. Maybe you've got a, a patio, a covered patio. You don't want to put these out in the rain, of course. A covered patio and a TV set. And by the way, this has HDMI built into it, so you're able to feed the video signal from this and get what's going on from this t from uh, this speaker up and into your TV. So you'll be able to see the artist, you'll be able to see everything that you're doing, and I love that. Anyway, so that's what Audio Spectrum is about. And then there is one more thing that I wish everybody would j do, and it is called DFE, Dynamic Fidelity Enhancement. Oh my God. The biggest problem that any crazy music lover has in their home is usually going to be their spouses. 
or the family. Could be the kids. Kids say, turn it down, I wanna play my video games, right? When I grew up, it was turn it down, I don't wanna hear your damn music. Now, right, I mean, it's a different time now. But the, uh, the problem is this, human hearing is less sensitive to bass response and top end as you turn music down. That's what a loudness contour button is about on your receiver. When you push that loudness button, it bumps up the bass, it may be a little bit of treble, and only at low listening levels, and as you turn up the volume, that effect goes away. Well, instead of just an on-off button, you are able to increase or decrease this dynamic fidelity effect uh, to your own personal taste. You'll be able to go all the way up to 18 and all the way down to minus 18. As you go up, you're gonna be uh, accentuating the bottom end and the fullness of the music at lower levels. As you turn it up, uh, it's gonna, you know, that effect is uh, gonna go away. I love that. It's like a variable loudness contour, I guess is the best way to put it. And I think that that is an invaluable uh, tool for, I mean, anybody, really. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, oh my God. And then, you know, these are gonna operate with all the great music services. Uh, it does, I mean, so you've got Cobuzz, Tidal, Deezer, Spotify, you know, there's a list on the uh, uh, Kaboss website. But here's the cool thing, right? If there's a hot new music service, if there's some new technology that they think you should have, just today, just today, when I turned my system on at home, there was a new software update. It's just like our Tesla car. The thing I love about my wife's Tesla is they keep on thinking about how to make the product better, how to make, it, make the product better, and they have over-the-air updates. I am not aware of another manufacturer uh, that makes a product like this that has over-the-air updates because these guys are crazy, crazy engineers and they're always thinking about a way to make these work better. They operate completely on Wi-Fi. In my opinion, if you're, uh, I think that with streamers or anything, you're always gonna be better off hooking them up to an ethernet to get the very, very best in performance, but I'm running them on Wi-Fi at my home and they work great. Now, if you go skipping from song to song and try to confuse the system or something, of course you can confuse it. I mean, there's a lot of, res there's a lot of data going on here being traded between the speakers, right? I mean, so if you think you're gonna be do doing crazy stuff, you might wanna run it on ethernet, but in my system at home, I just pop it on, I go to Stan Getz, hit play, and it rocks and rolls. I mean, it just absolutely blows my mind. Now, as far as inputs go, if you wanna run it with analog, you can do that. It has analog inputs on the back, it's got a, a, a digital out, it has ethernet. Uh, God, I'm trying to think of what else it had. Oh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. And then, oh, optical, USB, analog, stereo, right. So, I mean, it's gonna have everything that you need, but you know what? For me, this is an all-inclusive bitchin' stereo system. I'm, an, I'm a Neanderthal audiophile. I'm one of those knuckle-dragging tubes belt drive turntables, that's where my head's at, right? I mean, that's where my head's at. But some people, they can't do that anymore. Or maybe they wanna have this for a vacation home, or maybe in another room. Right now, I'm running a pair of these up in my video, my audio room, my sound room, and then I'm running another pair of pearls, uh, pearl Akoyas, in another room of the house. You can run up to eight of these throughout your house and control them independently or you can group them. I mean, it's just so bitchin'. And I'm telling you, as they come up with stuff, they're gonna add it in because that's the way that Kaboss is. So go to your local store. If you don't know who that is, reach out to us. We'll get you the hookup. If your dealer does not carry Kaboss, they should ask for it because this is something that is so different. Uh, everybody should know about it. Thanks.